Dear colleague, welcome to this course in calculation of coordinates. The course is based on the lectures above, further on downloadable operation plans with case guides. You can download the operation plans into your own workstation or navigation system. You will learn how to do the calculations from the lectures and you can then practice this yourself and compare with our recommendations in the case guides. Before we start with how to calculate coordinates, let us look briefly at the principles. Stereotactic neurosurgery is a technique using a three-dimensional coordinate system to reach structures in the central parts of the brain with high accuracy and to change their function by lesions or stimulation or in order to take tissue samples. When we want to reach a point in the brain from outside the skull, we need to know where the target is in relation to a point of reference outside the skull. For this reason, we use a stereotactic frame or a frameless system. There are several different stereotactic frames, many which are only of historical interest, and we will in this lecture use the most common system as an example. If you are using another system, please look in the lecture list and consult also the specific lecture on the system that you are using. Thus, we attach a frame to the head to work as a reference point, and we then perform an MRI, CT or X-ray to simultaneously visualize the frame and the intracranial structures. However, in reality, we are not looking directly at the position of the frame. Instead, we are attaching an indicator box to the frame from which we can calculate the location of the frame based on the markers in the indicator box, so-called fiducials. These fiducials are creating a three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system encompassing the brain. For the calculations, we are using the set-shaped linear markers on the MRI CT indicator box. On a horizontal slice, each set-shaped linear marker will be visible as free fiducials. The fiducials will basically tell us where the origin is in the coordinate system, that is, the central point in the stereotactic system. The origin of this coordinate system is not placed in the center of the stereotactic frame, but in the center of the whole stereotactic system, frame, arc supports and arc. The origin in this system is denominated with 100. Normally, when we are describing locations within the brain, we are dividing it into three planes and using terms such as anterior, posterior, lateral, medial, superior and inferior. With the stereotactic frame, we will instead express the location of the target using the free axis of the Cartesian coordinate system, where X expresses the laterality, Y the anterior posterior position, and Z the depth. The center, the origin, is identified by connecting four fiducials with a cross. The anterior posterior and the lateral location of any point in the brain can now be decided in relation to origin. The depth of a certain point is decided by measuring the distance between the middle and posterior fiducials. In the example here, the target is 23 mm lateral to the left, 9 mm anterior and 6 mm below the center of the frame. We thus get the frame coordinates x 100 plus 23 equals 123, y plus uh, is 100 plus 9 equals 109, and z 100 plus 6 equals 106. We now know where the origin in the stereotactic system is located, and we know the location of our target in the brain in relation to the origin. We will now add the arc and arc supports to the frame. If we put these on the frame in the neutral position, 
that is with x, y and z set to 100, then the center of the stereotactic arc would be coinciding with the origin, that is with the center of the stereotactic system. However, we don't want to reach this, but in this example our target in the GPI. So we set the x, y and z coordinates on the arc and arc supports, so that the center of the arc becomes displaced and is now coinciding with our intended target. We see the same thing in this video, how the arc is recentered as to coincide with the target. The angles, the ring and arc, can then be set to the chosen point of entry. And any instrument equal to the radius of the semicircular arc inserted at a right angle to the arc will end up in the target point, regardless of the point of entry. Calculations of coordinates can easily be done manually using a light box, a needle or a pen, mini calculator and a ruler. This is seldom needed nowadays, but it's good to know how it is done. It is easier to do these calculations on a workstation. You should know how to calculate the coordinates manually or on a workstation in case your navigation system should break down in the critical phase of your procedure. You will learn how to do the calculations on a workstation in the lecture above, but I will here give a brief presentation. The calculations are most often done on horizontal images at the level of the target. If we are performing atlas targeting, then we start by placing a measuring line from the anterior to the posterior commissure. We then identify the length of the ACPC and the mid-commissural point. Uh, where we will place a perpendicular line. We follow this to the laterality of the target point. Here we we'll place a new perpendicular line and extend this to the anterior posterior location of the atlas target. We can now mark the target point. If we are performing visual anatomical targeting, uh, in a target that we can see, we simply uh, identify and mark the target. In order to calculate the frame coordinates for the target, the centers of the anterior fiducials on each side of the brain are connected with the centers of the posterior fiducials with two oblique lines, thereby creating a cross. The fiducials in the middle are connected with a horizontal line. Move the horizontal line to the center of the cross. Create an angle line perpendicular to the horizontal line and passing through the center of the cross. Uh, in order to get the x-coordinate, we measure the distance from the target to the perpendicular line with a measuring line. This value is added to 100 if the target is located to the left of origin and subtracted from 100 if the target is located to the right of origin. In the example here, on the left side x is 100 plus 21 equals 121. On the right side we have x 100 minus 15.4 equals uh, x 84.5. In order to get the y coordinate, we measure the distance from the target to the horizontal line with a measuring line. This value is added to 100 if the target is located anterior of origin and subtracted from 100 if the target is located posterior of origin. In the example here, on the left side, we have y 100 plus 10.5 equals 110.5. And on the right side, y equals 100 plus 10 equals 110. In order to get the set coordinate, 
we measure the distance between the posterior fiducials and the middle fiducials on each side and divide by 2 to get the mean value. And then we add 40 to the mean value. In the example here, we have set equals 40 plus 65.4 plus 63.5 divided with 2 equals 104.5. Most often today, we will use a navigation system for calculation of coordinates. Often, one will use several different investigations. After you have imported the images into your navigation system, you will select the investigations that you want to use for the calculations and merge these on each other. One of the investigations, often a T1 sequence, will be chosen as the reference onto which the other investigations are merged. The merging is a possible source of error and it is important that you look at the merge and verify that it is correct. Look especially at the third ventricle and at the fiducials in the horizontal plane when you evaluate the merge. We will then identify and mark the anterior and posterior commissures and the midline in order to realign the images with these. In the next step, the navigation system will identify the fiducials of the CTMRI box and create the coordinate system. This is today done automatically, but you need to verify and sometimes manually correct these. If we are dealing with a functional target, then you can now choose the target of interest from the menu or type in the atlas coordinates. This is also a good starting point for visual targeting. If we are dealing with a visual target such as the STN or a tumor, you simply mark your target point. It is then time to choose a trajectory. For functional targets, I will start looking for a suitable entry point on or more often slightly behind the coronal suture at a laterality that is sufficient not to enter the ventricles and where I can enter a gyrus directly beneath the bone. When you have chosen both a target point and an entry, then you can optimize the target and the trajectory at all levels if necessary. The navigation system will then provide you with the coordinates and angles you need. I will now demonstrate targeting with a navigation system in a video. The targeting takes longer in reality, but this will give you a but better understanding on how it is done. However, in order to learn how to do it, please consult the lecture dedicated to targeting with a navigation system. So, we start with merging together the investigations of interest. Here we merge a T2 and a proton density onto a T1. When we have merged the images, we need to verify that this has been done correctly. The easiest way is to check the borders of the third ventricle and the merge seems to be fine. You can also look at the coronal view and in the sagittal view. Normally, if we have a problem with the merge, this will be most visible in the periphery. That's why I always look also at the fiducials. Here we see that uh, the merge is okay. There is a slight difference uh, at the um, fiducial marking the set in the middle, but this is normal when comparing these two investigations. So we verify the merge and we continue by identifying the anterior and posterior commissures on a T1. This is easiest done at the sagittal view where we look at the part of the anterior commissure that is most uh, bulging into the third ventricle and at the point of the posterior commissure directly above the aqueduct. 
We then optimize this on the horizontal view. And here we have the anterior commissure. And we set the AC. We then continue with the posterior commissure. And it should be at this level. And we set the posterior commissure. If we look further down, we see that we are entering the aqueduct. And that would be too deep. In the next step, we set the midline. Another way of finding the anterior commissure on a horizontal slide is to look at the foramen of Monroe. This is uh, normally found 4 to 5 mm above the anterior commissure. So we identify this and then we go down 4 or more often 5 mm and we will find the anterior commissure. It is now time to register the frame. This is done automatically by the computer, but we need to verify uh, that the identification is correct. And this is best done at the level of the target. If it's not optimal, then you can do a manual identification. It is now time to choose a target and a trajectory. Normally I start by finding a trajectory. I do this at the level of the coronal suture or slightly behind as seen here at suitable laterality and on a gyrus close to the bone. We set the entry in this point and then we continue to find the target. Let us start with the VIM I use the atlas coordinates uh, that is in the navigation system, but I prefer to correct the laterality. And we set target. Now we have a target and a trajectory, but we need to check the trajectory. That this is good and not entering the, some salsi or the ventricles. And this is a satisfying trajectory. We then ask the navigation system to provide us with the frame coordinates and angles for the frame we are using, as seen here. We now have everything we need to do the procedure. Let us now continue with another target, the STN. For this we choose a T2 sequence. So, sorry, we start with the PSA. We choose a T2 sequence and we go down about 4 mm. We can also uh, enter the atlas coordinates directly. That would be a laterality of 12 millimeters from the midline, 7.5 millimeters behind the mid commissural point, and 4 millimeter below the ACPC level. And we set the target to start with, but we don't rely on atlas coordinates. We use visual identification. We start by looking at the red nucleus and we want to choose the target at the level where the red nucleus has its maximal diameter. And we optimize the window to see this clearly. We look both at the coronal images and at the horizontal images. And we see that the maximum diameter in this case is at 4 mm below ACPC.
we look at the center of the red nucleus and this is located about 7 to 7.5 mm behind the M MCP and we then look at the posterior tip of the STN which seems to be located about 1 mm more anterior. Often it's helpful to use various helplines such as connecting the posterior tips of the STN or in this case uh, using the center of the red nucleuses. A line for the center of the red nucleus will typically uh, touch the posterior tip of the uh, STN or be very close. Now we move this point in a lateral fashion. It's located, posterior tip is located uh, at 13.5 millimeter, the lateral border of the red nucleus at 8 millimeter, and we set the target for the uh, zone insert or PSA at a laterality of 11.5 millimeter along this line. And we set the target. Now we have visually identified the posterior commissure, near the posterior subthalamic area. And we follow the trajectory up to see that we have a good uh, location of the electrode at all levels within the target area. And we go down again. And I'm happy with this location. We then continue with the target in the subthalamic nucleus. For this we identify the anterior border of the red nucleus at the same depth, that is where it has its maximal diameter. And we then identify the lateral medial border of the STN at this anterior posterior location. And this is located about uh, 10 millimeters from the midline. So we then move uh, this point along the line of the anterior border of the red nucleus uh, 1.5 to 2 millimeter more laterally. And this is the target point in the STN and we set the target. Now we look at all levels to make sure that we have a good position of all contacts within the target, within the STN. That is, that we are actually intubating this structure. And this looks reasonably good. When doing these calculations, you will all the time change the window to try to optimize the visualization of different structures or even different parts of some structures. And of course, in reality, this takes me a longer time and I will move the point 0 0.5 millimeter in this direction and then in another direction and then back until I am satisfied and happy. So, let us now continue with the, our final target in this lecture, the GPI. We choose a suitable entry point as described previously. And we set the entry. Then we start by using the atlas coordinates of the GPI and set the target. But also this target is identified visually. We use a proton density sequence for this. The first step now is to identify the upper lateral corner of the optic tract as seen here and we put the target there.
and we set the target. And now look at the higher levels within the GPI and uh, I think I'm a little bit too posterior and too lateral in this patient compared to the posterior tip as seen here. And here we can see the border of the GPI towards the GP and internal capsule. So I move the target somewhat more anterior and medially. And now I set the target at this level, the ACPC level, and then we go down again to the optic tract and set the target uh, along this trajectory at this level. And we go back up to check. And now we have a good position. I also measure uh, the distance to the posterior tip of the GPI and the whole length of the GPI to verify that we are within the posterior third of the GPI. We go down and up again and we see that we are in the GPI all the way until this level when we are almost 3 mm above the ACPC but we will exit at the GPI and enter the lamina between the GPI and GPE and we see it also here in the coronal view. This is, according to my opinion, a good trajectory in the target. But we also need to look at the higher levels to see if the trajectory is okay. And here we're a little bit too close to the salsi. So we go back to that level where we had a slight problem. We optimized location here and we set the entry point here at this level. And now we continue uh, up to the cortex along this trajectory and it looks good all the way. So now we set the entry point at this level finally. And we go down all the way again and we have no problems. Finally, we verify that uh, everything is okay within the GPI. So, in this course, we have a number of downloadable operation plans and exercises. And each one of the provided cases is described in detail also in the downloadable case guides. In these, we are providing coordinates for targets and entry points. There are of course several different navigation systems on the market. I am using one of these to demonstrate how the calculations are done but the principles are the same in all systems. If you are using another system, just adapt by using the manual for that specific system. If you are using another navigation system than the one used here, uh, just import the investigations as DICOM into your system and then identify our suggestions based on the provided coordinates. You can also use these cases when practicing manual calculations and calculations on a workstation. This is best done after you have done the exercises in part 7 as seen here. And with that I end this presentation. Thank you for your attention.